Is there an evolutionary reason for popping pimples and picking scabs? Great question. See? See? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Why pimples don't pop themselves, I don't exactly know. But I mean, they do. They do, yeah. but not always and yeah, not in time. One right? has like, the sense that for a skilled pimple popper who knows when to do this, it is an enhancement over what happens naturally. And yep. what I would say is what one finds inside a poppable pimple. Oh, wow. That's where we're going. Okay. What Let's one do it. finds in there mm -hmm. are presumably surface pathogens encrusted in white blood cells. That's what pus is. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is you, your immune system has correctly found some bacteria in some pocket in your skin and it has um, encrusted it. And then you are getting rid of that pathogen um, by expelling it into the world, which is good. Right. So yeah. So you, you want to get rid of that. What you don't want to do is get rid of that with, you know, fingernails that themselves may have similar surface pathogens on them. You need, you, you, you need don't, to be very, very clean. Right. You don't want to get, you don't want to give yourself an infection and you don't want to drive it inward. Right. The whole thing works if you expel it into the world. And, um, right. So, and then with regard to scabs, scabs um, I mean, this, one of the things that I think of here, I mean, this is, the answer to this question has to be gross. So I guess let's just like, let's just go yeah, there. Yeah, that's not on us. Uh, that's not on us. It's on uh, blankety blank slate. Who wrote? Who wrote this question? <laughs> <laughs> just got touche. Yeah. That's good. Um, so blankety blank slate is is who to blame here for for discussion here. Um, I'm reminded, uh, and I actually haven't heard this from a veterinarian in modern times, but when I was little and my cat uh, would get herself into fights because she was a badass who got herself into fights and she would get just torn up and, um, and get these like deep, deep lacerations uh, that would scab over. The veterinarian would say, T take the scab off, let it, you know, let it ooze, uh, because otherwise you're likely to get an infection that's deep. And if you keep on um, letting it expel what, uh, what is in there, it's much more likely to not need further, um, further work from any of us, um, being the sort of the veterinary professionals at that point in the like 70s and 80s. Um, and it did work. Right. Yep. And in general, this um, this this is likely to be at least part of the answer. So let's put it this way. I think scabs are very often picked badly, mm -hmm. picked in error, but that the too instinct. Early. Yes. Yeah. It's, yep. It's, yep. Too early is right. Mm -hmm. um, but that in some sense, if you think about the classic uh, scraped knee. Yeah. Right. Classic scraped knee is going to involve a lot of stuff, you know, not stuff embedded in the skin, in the wound, right? And you can pick out the big stuff, you know, which well, will be- Well, you're not picking scabs at that point. So that, that's No, no, like I'm, I'm going to get there. Okay. I'm going to get there. Point is, you first skin your knee, right? You get all kinds of little gravelly stuff in there, and you will be driven to take out the stuff that you can find with your fingers, right? The little, little rocks and things. But there's lots of stuff below the scale that you could access it. Mm -hmm. And in some sense, I mean, I do think wound healing is, as far as I know, I've gone looking for evidence of what we understand. It feels to me like we know very little about this process and that basically it works and we know how to augment it and protect it. But we don't know a lot about the, the magic underneath. Mm -hmm. Maybe, hopefully, somebody will point us to um, some large uh compendium of information but the yeah, point is one of the things that is true is as you are healing things are moving in various directions right cells are forming uh, things are being pushed and my guess is that that layer of um that matrix of stuff that makes up the scab contains stuff that has been pushed to the surface right and so that a process in which you pull a scab at the right moment is actually removing things that need to be or may need to be removed helping the conveyor belt of healing happen so i mean i guess i would just add that there's a um <clears throat> very valuable and perhaps necessary for complete healing part of what you do at the point that you've say gotten road rash um that is necessary that you didn't mention which is sort of yeah you know use use your fingers use the tools on you 
to get the macro stuff out, but then flush it. You know, if you've got run, running water either from a faucet or a stream, as long as it's it's clean, um, so as to get some amount, a larger amount of the microscopic stuff that you have no chance of dealing with um, with your fingers. And you know, and it, it depending depending on where you are and what you have access to and what it is that you destroyed yourself on, uh, flushing with hydrogen peroxide or um, or alcohol. It can also be useful depending on how deep it is, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but the, you know, the, the flushing of it will mean that as the scab is, uh, is uh, setting, uh, there is going to be less, it's less likely that there will be a lot of things that need to continue to continue to be evacuated from the wound. Yeah. Although in both the case of the zit and the scab, yeah. part of the point is that actually your body has a way of dealing with this stuff if you don't get it out. And it's not so elegant, right? So yeah. it can wall it's really off. It's not elegant. Yeah, yeah. It can wall yeah. off stuff that can just permanently live in uh, your tissue, mm -hmm. or it can dismantle it molecule by molecule, mm -hmm. right? Those aren't nearly so good as, hey, that's a macroscopic thing. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. I would also just point out, though, that we do something uh, which I think in many ways is positive, um, but that interrupts this whole wound healing scab formation we thing. humans we we moderns okay uh the daily shower thing yeah right mm -hmm. so that has an interface with this that's most unnatural and so i guess the question i would have well is, and specifically the daily shower with soap um soap which um you know takes away all of all of the bacterial stuff on your skin most of which is beneficial Right. That's true. Um, but also even just the w warm water breaks apart the stuff. So the, the point is just, just as in our book, we talk about the, Hey, if your bone is aligned, you might not need a cast mm -hmm. question. Um, there's some ancient way that scabs work that presumably does not result in every hunter gatherer picking scabs too early, but them knowing exactly when yeah. they should actually be pulled well, off without, without daily showers. Also, the scab is likely to become hardened sooner and perhaps then be ready, you know, have a right. few, have a few iterations more than, you know, if you're, if you're regularly softening it with your shower, um, it's a different kind of a beast. Right. That's the thing is yeah. that we, I don't think we have a good yeah. sense of how that changes things because yeah. uh, it's, it's pretty rare that you, you're in a situation where you don't have a shower available.